Robert Rivas Radio, Tejano, and much more. Good morning, Double R Radio, and at this time, it is my honor, my privilege, to have Joe Lopez, the Super Grupo Mas, joining me on my morning show. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Mr. Rivas. Y un saludo a todo el público que está escuchando aquí. Y estoy muy orgulloso de, de oír tu voz a través de la radio. Uh, I remember when we used to be uh, together with EMI. Pero gracias a Dios que estás todavía en la onda tejana and helping us out. Thank you very much, Robert. Oh, no, no, no problem, Joe, whatsoever. Amigo, I cannot remember the last time me and you had a conversation, even more so cuando trabajé contigo with, con Emmy, with EMI Latin. And, uh, I mean, I remember calling you and telling you when I first started with EMI, I told you, Joe, I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm not only your promoter, but I'm one of your biggest fans, so you're getting a two-for-one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that, yeah. yeah. I was very excited. I'll never forget when I was in the office the first day, and somebody goes, do you remember uh, Joe John Ortiz? Sí, si, sí. Si. I remember when uh, they said, John Ortiz, Joe Lopez, line one, and I go, wow, Joe Lopez is on the phone, man. I got to talk to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much. You've always been a, a gentleman and a lot of respect for you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amigo, first things first, um, I want to congratulate you on finally being released from prison. Yeah, that's a, it's been a real uh, ugly, painful uh Ten years, but uh, thank God that there is a God and He can uh, help us if we talk to Him and He'll listen to us. And y gracias también de hoy a, a Sandra Vallejo um, por hacer todo lo posible para que me soltaran en parole para poder uh, show everybody that I am innocent and that I have all the proofs to to, uh, to show to everyone to prove that I'm innocent. And I'm very close, but I'm uh, a generation, so. Uh, thank God and uh, keep on praying that they will exonerate me. No doubt, Joe, as to before anything else, también, I definitely want to give a big good morning shout out to Sandra Vallejo for helping put this interview together. I thank you, Sandra, so very, very much for putting this together. I really do appreciate it. Now, that being, that being said, moving forward, Joe, amigo, uh -huh. what was the feeling like when finally stepping out of those doors from prison and being free? <laughs> Oh, can you imagine the scene, the, the daylight again and seeing the clouds and the, the nighttime, the daytime, the sun, the stars, it's, uh, it was, it's beautiful. I was in the solitaire for 10 years. I didn't go out. They had me in a one cell for protection and, and protective custody, so they were protecting me, apparently, you know, they, they said they were, but they were actually keeping me inside and not letting me do anything, so now that I'm a uh, When I stepped out of that place, it was like stepping into heaven. It was beautiful. I congratulate Well, man, I congratulate you, Joe, so very, very much. Now, let me ask you this. How much support did you receive from your family and friends while you were incarcerated? Oh, uh, I have no words to finish and darle las gracias a tanta gente que a través de los 10 años they wrote to me, me mandaban cartas todos los días and thousands of letters that have, uh, The officers there were very upset because they had to deal with me privately with all the mail that I was getting from all my fans. And they doy las gracias por todo el apoyo que, que siempre mis fanáticos siempre han estado ahí para mí. Y all those that believe that I'm innocent, uh, they were always there for me since day one. And they're proud now that they believe that I was telling the truth and I'm still telling the truth. And uh, praying for all of you people out there, all my fans, thank you so much. Amigo, um, how um, how well informed were you about what was going on in La Onda Tejana with the music and stuff like that? Did, was anybody keep you informed about what bands were coming out with songs, what weren't, who was uh, splitting up, and whatever the case may be? Were you being informed about, you know, then we're keeping updated in La Música Tejana? Yes, uh, my, my dear brother, my angel brother, Lorenzo Lopez, and he was... Uh, He was the one that kept me up every day and kept calling me every uh, every week and kept coming to see me. He, he was the one who gave me all the, the news that was estaba pasando because I didn't want to have a radio in, inside my, my cell because it, it only depresses me more to hear the music and I'd rather not listen to anything. But he kept me up with, with everything and he did a lot for me, my brother Lorenzo. 
lot I own a lot. Qué bueno, qué bueno, qué bonito. Joe, speaking of, of La Onda Tejana, we've been losing Tejano icons left and right, of course. Uh, uh, the, the first icon that we just lost was Jimmy Gonzalez, of course. It's, uh, I mean, you and Jimmy, you know, you were just like um, from, you know, when they started, ustedes juntos, and you guys were together for so, so long. Éxito tras éxito tras éxito. I mean, how did you feel when you found out Jimmy Gonzalez passed away? Well, it was uh, very, very painful, very sad, to, and um, I miss my brother. But, but you know, it's uh, uh, we all have to go through this, and uh, unfortunately, the the way the way that that is said for life, and it's a circle of life. One, uno se van primero y otro después, and and uh, so I, well, I thank everybody for supporting Jimmy and and for uh, listening to him while I was in prison. And uh, I want to thank his family and and all my family for supporting him also. And we miss him, and uh, and uh, he rests in peace. You know, I know that you were coming close to be released, and of course Jimmy was still doing his thing. And I think there was a lot of talk out there. You know, saying this is being set up so nicely, you being released from prison, and you know, I guess uh, the hope of a reunion concert, a reunion tour of you and Jimmy. You know, and and lo and behold, Jimmy passes away. Yeah. Uh, yes, he was going to help me with my my new uh, uh, CD, and we had talked about it, and that he wanted to keep it, you know, for the people who still, you know, he he likes to have a lot of a fight, and he he, you know, he didn't want anybody to know yet, and but we were going to work together once more, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, God didn't want that so it's, a, it's another thing now. I know that, that, that you, I know that you have worked without Jimmy cuando con empezaste, sino con la nueva imagen, and you were doing your own thing. But I got to tell you, man, I mean, I think everybody wanted this reunion. Everybody wanted to see Joe and Jimmy back on stage together. And just, I mean, amigo, I mean, the concerts that y'all would put on, man, I mean, they, they were just, you know, they, they would be in our memories for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Uh Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, now that you mentioned that, and I imagine, uh, I did uh, Little Joe's group, and I, I also made the uh, El Grupo Mas is mine. I registered it back in 1978 when I first started with, with Jimmy, and uh, and I also did the No Imagen Mas, but it was, uh, the No Imagen Mas was like the, the fourth Mas, you know, I never lost my, my name Mas. I, when I went to prison, I couldn't... Uh, Fight back, but now that I'm that I, I came out, I, I we send a letter to Jimmy stating him that he cannot use the name Mouse anymore. Uh, now it's a totally different thing. We got lawyers and music lawyers and and all kinds of good lawyers and the legal rights to have uh, the name respected out there. For people are just using it like if it was a karaoke, you know, they make it. They make a, a band that they just started two, three years ago, and they call it Moss, and that is very wrong and very bad. It took me 35 years for that name to travel all over the world, and uh, I'm not going to let anybody just come in and get it dirty. So I'm, I, uh, I'm letting people know out there, uh, those U.S. West and Far West and whatever you want to call them and, and the Grand Central Stations and all those people that are still uh, promoting the Honda Tejana, so please, please respect me and respect Jimmy and don't let nobody fool you and say that they're a group of monsters because they're not. They'll never be another monster. And uh, unfortunately, there's his own family is doing that. So I hope that Mikey's out there listening and uh, do your own thing. If you all are good enough to do something of music, well, do your own thing and have your own name and see how hard it is to have some... Uh, Everybody just come and, and, and build you up, and then anybody can come and destroy you. Amigo, um, along with Jimmy Gonzalez, we lost Emilio Navaida, another Tejano icon. How did you find out about his passing? Well, Loreso told me, like I said, and uh, I couldn't believe that. He was a, a good day, die young. I, I guess I, I have, I know that he died of a, a heart attack or something like this, but he went through through a lot of pain when he had that accident and he survived that but I think that, that took away a lot of his life. 
I can remember, Joe. I've got a vivid memory. When I was first getting into this crazy business at Tejano, I remember seeing you and Emilio Nevada perform together back in 1989 at the Blanco Ballroom in San Antonio. Can you imagine that? Two heavy hitters, Joe Lopez <laughs> and Super Glue and Emilio at the Blanco Ballroom. It would only fit 500. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Now you, you could have put it at the Alamo Dome. You could have put it, but 500 people, and I just think to myself, how special that was when you guys yeah. both. I mean, estaban pescando lumbre after with the Tejano crowds. Yeah, that was beautiful, man. And we did a lot of uh, small places and and a lot of big places. Also, we did the Esther Dome and we did a lot of big concerts. And Emilio was always uh, respectful and. He was a gentleman, and uh, he was a good guy, good guy, and a good person. And I'm really sorry for what happened. And his compliments to all all his fans that followed him and still follow him. And uh, we must never forget those who worked very hard all their lives. But la onda Tejano. Joe, do you have a special memory of Emilio Navida? Maybe somewhere at a concert or somewhere where y'all talk together. No tienes algo especial. Sí, cuando estábamos en uh, New Mexico, estuvimos allá en, uh, en, uh, en uno de los casinos con Little Joe, my good friend Little Joe. Un saludo para ti, Little Joe y la familia. And, and, and we were out there having a, a beautiful time, and, and he wanted to uh, do a song with me and record a song with me. And I already had plans to do it with Little Joe, so I told him no, and he felt real bad. He made it una cara así como... como like, <laughs> forget his face. And I told him, no, no, I mean, we'll do it. We'll go ahead and do one song, and I promise you that we'll record it. But uh, then this happened. Yeah. Um, amigo, I mean, so many memories. I think you, you remember cuando, when I used to be at Key Town, con Carlos Perez, Danny Levinson. And y'all would always slam it. I mean, well, so many memories of you guys performing at T-Town. Look at no T-Town. Wow. That was something else. That place was exploding every time we played there. It was on fire. Very nice. And Danny was so good to me. And all those people were so good. Thank you, Danny. Out there. Maybe you're listening to us. Well, um, I don't know if you've been informed or not, but Danny Levinson passed away several years ago. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, I didn't. A poco, pobrecito. That's really bad, man. Yeah, he passed oh, away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say maybe, Joe, about 10 years ago, give or take, but I tell you what. I mean, I used to I used to kind of criticize him, mock him, make fun of him, because then you have a super group of mock posters all over T-Town, man. He loved you guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, I used to stay over his place and... We used to have a lot of fun together. He's a real nice man. He was a real nice man. And, and may he rest in peace also. And one day we'll see everybody out there. One day we'll be all together. Amigo, how special was it to do that recording at Rosedale Park live in Super Grupo Mas? Ain't that something? It was, you know, you could do a lot of uh, recordings and a lot of things for La Onda Tejana, but suddenly you do a place where... It'll stay for the rest of the, the eternity, and everybody remembers that day. It, it was just a regular day. It was just another another day out there in La La Land, you know, recording. And and the, to me, it was nothing. I, I record live, and I record in the studio. I do the same job and the same thing, although a lot of people thought I was using tapes and and uh, uh, just uh, lip singing, but, you know, they realized that I did sing every time and that I used my voice every time, so... No rehearsal, it was just another concert and another day, and it's in uh, everybody's mind and memory for the rest of our lives. It's, uh, it was a big kid, and we got double platinum for that, and and it's still playing. So we thank the people. Without the people, none of this would be possible. And God, you know, of, course, of, of course, you know, Joe, um, when I interviewed Jimmy Gonzalez about a couple of years ago, I asked him about one certain song, and he was just simply blown away when I mentioned this song, and he always held it special, and he always gave San Antonio full credit, and I'm talking about the song, Por Que Dios Mío. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, that song, that song is one of the songs that will stay, you know, forever. It was a song that I, I heard when I was young, and uh, 
when I was a little boy there, I, I used to love the way uh, Iberto Perez would sing and his, Los Compadres, and I would go to their, their dances, and they would play that song all the time, and, and but they did it different. It was, it was more of a dance song, dancing song, and uh, what Jimmy and I did was we turned it around and, and uh, made it for someone who had just passed away, so... It's, and it, it played with you. Yeah, yeah, and it exploded, didn't it, Joe? It, that song just exploded for y'all. Exploded. It was something out of this world. And the skill is, they still play it. Can you imagine, because you were there, how did you feel hearing the thousands and thousands of people at Rosedale Park singing along to that song? They would love to sing along with me on that song. It was beautiful, you know. They, I had one A side and B side of, of the crowd, and uh, they were always competing against each other. They couldn't wait to uh, for me to single them to start, you know, uh, the clapping or the yelling and on each side, and then they were all <laughs> all together. They would all together. They would sing. They were they were louder than the speakers I had, and I had a big system, but they were louder. The, the people just love that song. They Memorized it and sang with me. Yes. Joe, how about your memories when y'all would perform at Market Square? Oh, that's another another big dream right there, another beautiful place. It's uh, remarkable how all the Wanda Tejana, they, they have different places where they really express themselves and they really show the, the support for La Onda Tejana. And all those people who go to the market have, you know, first... First thing that comes to their mind is uh, going to eat at Vigera, and then all those little <laughs> going to eat all those little taquito stands, and then it, it's just a, a big celebration, and and, then they eat it. and all the best groups are there, and all the big stars are there, and all the good promoters are there, and all the radio people are there, and all the the, the producers and record companies, and uh, it, it turns out to be an enormous uh, uh, event. I, I can remember, Joe, I can remember one time before I got into this crazy business, I was having dinner at this restaurant, and lo and behold, this big bus pulls up, and I see all you guys get off, and I go, wow, man, that's a super group of mas. Tell me if you remember this place aquí in San Antonio called the Blanco Cafe. <laughs> oh, yes, that's what I forget. Uh, that was Jimmy's favorite place in mine. We, we used to love the video with the... With, uh, with the beans, or, you know, pita beans, and uh, what they used to make there, they used to make us uh, flour tortillas uh, right there, and they would pick the best food there in, in the world. The owner, that man there, was, was a good friend of mine, and uh, his daughter was a really nice lady, so we had a great, great, great time every time we went to Blanco's Cafe. El Blanco Cafe, aquí en San Antonio, and they live on, amigo, they live on. Uh, Joe, now, este, moving forward here, um, you have written some songs while you were incarcerated, right? that? Yes. Yes, I, I've done uh, 189 to be exact. And oh, that's, wow. a, that's, in a, that's in a period of 10 years, so I never stopped writing every day. And I also wrote two books, one book of my life, El Grupo Mas, and the other one is All the Injustice They Did to Me in and uh, all these false accusations. The other one is uh, I'm still working on the last chapter because I'm still on the last chapter right now. But uh, Yo, it'll be two, two books out, yes. Awesome. Amigo, um, do you have any plans on signing with a record label? Are you with a record label right now? I own my own record label now, my own uh, recording company, my own uh, uh, publishing company. and uh, So, no, I, I, this time, I'm, like I said, this time I'm doing it for the people, from my part to their parts, and uh, this time there's nobody in between, nobody ripping them off, and nobody selling uh, this and that and adding this and that to a CD and just making money out of you. This time, if whatever I produce out there, it's gonna it's gonna be for the people, not for the not for the record company. This the record company is mine. And I owned it, and I owned the label, and I own everything, so. This time sounds, around, it'd be different, yes. It sounds to me, Joe, like if you want to control, now you want to control everything, you want to control your music, how it's promoted, how it's played, and everything. Now you want to control everything, right? Huh? Yes, yes. Can you imagine all these years that I did? For 35 years, I wrote songs left and right, 
and they were all stolen. They were all copied, and they were all uh, taken away from the, the record company, saying that they owned it now the rights to it because I signed a contract that I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, year after year, they, they destroyed my, my music. And this time, nobody's going to touch it, and nobody's going to touch my band, and nobody's going to touch anything I do anymore. And I'm protected every every step I make. I've, I've been protected, so yeah. This time around, it's it's uh, for real, and it's real business. This is not something that that I was doing like in the beginning when I was just doing it just for the fun of it and enjoying the the laughs and enjoying this. And I was the first one who did a record with Capitol Records, so that was a big step when I started. And I help everybody, and you can tell, you can ask them. I help everybody that I own the Tejano, starting from the mafia all the way to Emilio, to Jay, to Ram. I help everybody. To Selena, I gave them all the chance to be with me on stage, and uh, and they became famous because of my fans. My fans are good people, very good people. Joe, do you plan on performing on stage anytime soon? Absolutely. As soon as I get exonerated, I'll be able to do it. Right now, I can't. There's no way I can do nothing right now because I'm going to court and I'm going to uh, show my innocence and then they're going to release me. And as soon as they do that, I'm, uh, I can go back to, into the studio and do all my music and, and uh, release it as soon as possible. It won't take me but 30 days to record everything and, and uh, put it out there for everybody. Do you see a time frame, maybe six months, a year, something like that? I think the most that it will take me would be six months. In the next six months, I should be released and everything should be back to normal and I should be out there on the road and recording at the same time. Because I promise you there's a lot of anxious people out there, man, that want to see you get you know, back on stage performing. I'm yeah, everywhere I go over there, everybody asks me, you know, when are you going to get back on stage? We're going to go and they're already trying to buy tickets and all this so it's a it's a, it's going to be an exciting uh, tour an exciting uh, thing this time around it'll be totally different like i said and this is all business now amigo um i did an interview with abraham quintanilla a couple of years ago and um i'm going to ask you a question that i asked him about his daughter selena and um the question that i asked him that i'm, I'm going to ask you now is that I'm very, very surprised you and Selena both being on EMI Latin and you and Selena never sang a duet together, recorded a duet together. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, they asked me to do it, but, uh, but at the time they were just, like I said, they were just uh, using me and, and uh, making me sing with Laura Canales and making all the millions for them and not, nothing for me. They wouldn't give me nothing. And... Uh, when they asked me to, to do a song with Selena, and I go, okay, well, what am I going to get out of this? Well, no, it's just the, the, the fame. Well, I already have the fame, so what what, what am I going to get? What kind of money are you talking about? And they said, no, it was just something they wanted to do. I said, no. They thought I was going to go back and do it, but I, I, was, I wanted to do a song with Selena, and I also wanted to do a song with a lot of other artists, but it's just the idea of them making the money and not me. I hear you. I understand, and 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 you've got to do what what you got to do for Joe Lopez. You know, you got to take right. care of Joe Lopez. Right, right. And they didn't have no respect for me. They were just using me and using my talent, and then saying that they did it. So that's on top of everything. They step you in the back, and and that was not right. That's very wrong, because I dedicated my life to them, and I gave them everything I had. The best, the CBS was another big recording company, and I did, I gave them a gold album, a gold CD, and, and uh, they did nothing for me. They, uh, they thought that, you know, it was like, they believed that Coca-Cola would sell itself without promotion or without anything, and you always have to have somebody promoting you or working with you, and uh, they expect me to do all the work. When, when, you, when you were incarcerated, um, you were signed with uh, Freddie Records, verdad? Right? Yes, that's, before I went to, to prison, I did. I, I had signed a, 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 a recording with him for three years because I wanted to see if we could work together, Jimmy and I, and 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 you know, and come up with something really good. 
but no, it just it's just uh, another another <laughs> recording company just using you. And I, I said, uh, no, no, not anymore. This this guy, he has to this has to stop. And uh, I stopped. I uh, I took him to court, and we we won. We got our name back, and I I have no business with them anymore. Thank God. Amigo, what is in the future for Joe Lopez? My my record company is gonna. Its name is I named it Freedom Records. I call it Freedom Records because I am free again. And when I record every song that I do, it'll remind me of being free. So Freedom Records is gonna be my label, and I can't wait to be out there with everybody and sing to everyone from the heart. And I just can't wait to be there for all of you, and especially being back on stage and and seeing you guys once again, and I, I, it's something that I just can't wait. Joe, w when you were in prison all those years, did you ever look back at all the music that you've recorded? All Tanto Exico, it, it seemed like it didn't matter what song you picked on the CD, album, however you want to put it, they were all hits. Did you ever reflect back on that and say, I can't believe so much that I've done in La Onda Tejana? Yes, yes, es, uh, es un orgullo muy grande para mí haber tenido la fuerza de Dios para, para haber hecho tanto lo que hice para la gente de, de Tejana, ¿verdad? Porque siempre a través de los años, I would sit down and, and I would tell Jimmy, we need to have every song to be a hit in the CD, not just one or two for the record company, and the rest, they just add whatever they wanted to it. And uh, we did that, and every every CD we did was every song was was a good major. A lot of the songs I didn't put out in the, in the CD, I would record them, and but I didn't use them. So a lot of material was left behind. Amigo, any last words for your fans, for your friends, for your families, for the radio stations? Any last words? Pues, lo más quiero mandarle un saludo a mi gran amigo Jover Rodriguez, the singer of the Blue Notes. He's a, a gentleman and. Uh, he's got a beautiful restaurant out there in, in San Antonio. Y le doy las gracias a todo el público a través de los años como me han ayudado, me han apoyado. And thank you fans out there for sending me uh, your fan mail, the birthday cards, the Christmas cards, and all those beautiful prayers that you all had for me and sent me. Uh, un saludo muy grande de hoy a Rafael uh, uh, the other, the Truth City, uh, uh, Media, uh, Media, Moreno, and all those beautiful people that, a través that week after week after week, they would write to me and help me and uh, put money in my account so that I would have money enough to eat and uh, to have a lot of food. That's why I gained so much weight. I just, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm working on that right now to lose all this weight. And as soon as I get back to the States, I want to reward everybody with a beautiful hug and, and, a, and a beautiful kiss and I want to thank everybody uh, that, that is uh, a los años y como te digo I can't wait to be on stage to see everyone again Amigo and oh. if you're working on if you're working on losing some of your weight stay away from the Blanco Cafe Amigo <laughs> <laughs> That's true That's very true Amigo I cannot tell you how many people? I've done so many interviews. My station has been up and running five years. I've had over 300,000 people go through my station. I've had so wow. many interviews, and I cannot tell you, Joe, how many people told me, man, Robert, you've got to have a sit down. You've got to have an interview with Joe Lopez. And, I, you know, this is, to me, it's kind of like a dream come true, not only to have promoted you, worked with you, but now to interview you. And, of course, I want to thank Sandra Vallejo. It's your management for helping put this together, and 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 yes. definitely you, Mr. Joe Lopez, for taking the time to do this interview. Thank you, thank you so so much, Robert Rivas, and I want to let everybody know out there if you want to look for me, just JoeLopezMoss dot com, and and uh, and you can find anything you need for me and uh, the latest news and everything. You know, ahora en día estamos a través de la internet, so uh, todo the social media, everybody's. Uh, sending their love to me, and I appreciate it very much. And thank you, Robert Rivas. Thank you so much for your station and for the radio and for giving me an opportunity uh, to be 
a través de, las, de, de, de tu de radios y tus micrófonos. Thank you very much, Robert. Joe Lopez, thank you for being part of Robert Rivas Radio. Thank you so much. Robert Rivas Radio. Tejano and much more.